Hey everybody, after over five years of running this YouTube channel, I have always been skeptical about solid UFOs. But today I have new information about how they might work and how the military have known about this for over 65 years. So this was my existing position. UAP, exotic physics, uh, yes, they could well be NHI probes visiting Earth, time traversing, conscious energy, but metal flying saucers? Nope. You see, the issues for a physical craft are enormous. They would need a propulsion system at near light speed, structural integrity for extreme G maneuvers. And honestly, folks, I don't think they've ever been spotted on our deep space radar approaching our solar system. Many countries are deeply interested in anything circling our Earth. And just imagine if an unknown craft descended through our atmosphere. Uh, they would be met by a reception committee. <laughs> But hang on, Simon. All of those issues that I've just mentioned might have been solved by a fortuitous encounter with a solid UFO in July 1957. An American Eland aircraft had a close encounter. Uh, Eland? What's that? Electronic intelligence. Did you know that the first American satellite was in fact an Elint bird? Your military need to know what frequencies an enemy is using for their radio and radar. So Elint flying laboratories fitted with passive listening radio equipment support every military maneuver. So in the summer of 1957, an Elint RB-47 was on a shakedown mission over the Gulf and over Texas, when the crew on board received a strange message from the radar station that was tracking them in Texas. You're being followed by a UFO. This plane was flying out of Forbes Air Force Base, Kansas, and the crew was on a training mission to shake down the airplane and test out its components. This crew detected and recorded on uh, wire recorders and tape recorders the electronic signals, radar-like in nature, that came from the same direction and location as the UFO. It followed them and then overtook them as they flew over Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and Oklahoma for over two hours that night. You have a very experienced crew of a very sophisticated airplane having something very strange happen. But what makes this UFO encounter special? The Elint plane had all the equipment on board to measure any frequencies emanating from the UFO that was following them. What they observed changed history. They detected that the craft was emitting a three gigahertz constant energy source, and it was surrounded by light, thrown away by plasma, recombining into stable atoms. The frequency that the craft emitted might be a giant clue to the craft's drive system, and can help explain why a visitor from afar can visit Earth and not be spotted. Here's an amazing fact. Over 60 years later, you and I might actually sit or lie in a machine that uses that UFO technology. MRI, a magnetic resonance imaging machine, a device that surprisingly might use the same principles as a UFO drive system that a solid UFO might need to fly in space time. So let's talk about gravity. In fact, you and I need to talk about three things. Space-time, mass, and gravity. The three are bound together in a triangle. Space-time, mass, and gravity. So to reach the holy grail of affecting gravity, you need to affect space-time or mass. It's not so hard. Really big things like a star can already do that. Distorting space-time with mass to make 
gravity. So remember, gravity probably isn't a force. It's a side effect of distorted space-time by mass. So to have an effect on gravity, one way to do it is to have the mass of a star. A uh, bit of a tall order, but hang on. What if individual atoms can be affected? A lot of subatomic particles inside atoms have a magnetic charge. And so that attraction and repulsion might be affected by a very small amount of energy. But on the atomic scale, that might be able to cancel the effect of distorted space-time by mass. I like it, but does it work? Well, hang on, viewers. I'm really going to oversimplify this and show you an effect that I know really does work. A real effect that got the brilliant Eric Laithwaite expelled from the established scientific community. Eric Laithwaite, by the way, is the brilliant inventor of the linear motor and levitation. My hero. Eric saw that a spinning wheel acting as a gyroscope had a strong force acting at an angle to the rotation that moved the spinning wheel. If that vector of movement is pointing up, the wheel points up. Letting Eric lift a heavy spinning wheel with reduced force. Simply brilliant, a man ahead of his time. So now let's imagine we can alter the gyroscopic spin of a subatomic particle inside an atom. An angle vector of movement will also occur. But that's not what we observe in everyday life. All matter is made up of millions of atoms, but they all spin in random orbits. That random spin cancels out any vectored gyroscopic directional movement, making everyday matter uniformly affected by gravity. But imagine a material that could have its atomic spin aligned. It then might be shielded from gravity and then have the ability to move freely in its own space-time. Was the buzz from the 1957 UFO demonstrating aligned gravity? One man thought it might be. Doctor of Physics Frederick Alzefon. His son David describes his father's insight into atomic spin. The US Air Force was interested in uh gravitation research, particularly in the idea of altering the gravitational field. And then came this sighting uh, that the U.S. Air Force had over the Gulf of Mexico uh, in 1957. And it was a, um, a, a bomber, just exactly like the bomber in uh, Dr. Strangelove, but outfitted not for nuclear weapons, but electronic reconnaissance. And this plane was flying over the Gulf of Mexico with a crew on board that were getting training in electronic countermeasures. And lo and behold, out comes a UFO out of nowhere and starts flying rings around the uh, aircraft. And they had their antenna, passive antenna, on. And they took readings from the UFO. And it was emitting uh, a very strong pulsed, microwave signal at a uh, certain frequency. I guess it was three gigahertz, roughly. And this started my dad thinking, what does a pulsed microwave signal have to do with their propulsion? What you're doing is in dynamic nuclear orientation is you're leveraging the spin on the electrons and getting the electrons to flip the nuclei and add a directional movement to the nuclei. So it's a leveraging operation. The, the way it works is simply you set up a magnetic field that causes the electrons to precess in a uh, uniform direction and around the same axis in a sample of a metal. And then you, um, you flash them at right angles with a microwave signal. This causes the electrons to precess so violently that they flip over. And when they do, they transfer angular momentum to the nuclei. What his theory led him to believe was that if you did this repetitively, say 600 times a second, it would uh, deplete the energy in the surrounding gravitational field. But Frederick never succeeded in getting a working model 
of the effect that the scientific community would accept. But military defence contractors were very interested. Today we use a line magnetic spin to force hydrogen atoms in the water of the human body to spin in a way that we can image our internal structure. But the obvious application as a vehicle drive system has gone dark. If it could be mastered, we could travel through the vastness of space in seconds, move at incredible speeds through different mediums, such as air or water, all with a craft and its occupants being immune to the large space-time gravity effects we normally face, such as acceleration or g-forces that would turn a human body into a red pulp. So viewers, do humans have these type of craft today? And did we discover atomic spin modification from an encounter with a UFO? These and other questions I'm going to explore with you on this YouTube channel. In my next film, I'll talk to brilliant engineers from Falcon Space who have made Frederick Alzafon's device work and have overcome the one thing that is holding us humans down, uh, gravity. I need to thank Tim Ventura very much for introducing me to the men who are building our new modern world, and to my patrons who support these films and very much keep my feet on the ground. Please stay tuned, subscribe, and press like now, and do everything you can to share this disclosure, because the truth is out there.